Greetings and welcome to yet another edition of Stow World. Tony here with you. And I'm back after all this time. Yeah, I know it's been a very, very long time since I have done a video. And uh, I'm going to explain to you a little bit uh, about that. But first, I want to welcome you aboard the USS Excalibur. And uh, this is the Fleet Battle Cruiser. So it's a Fleet Battle Cruiser that I remember the Battle Cruiser that they ended up coming out with back, uh, you know, back in the fall over the summer. This was going to be the emphasis of, of this was going to be the next episode that I did until I had video card issues, and I'll explain about that in a little bit. But going to go over the battle cruiser, going to go over the setup, going to go over some of the cool things that I have going on with this ship. Of course, you're aboard the bridge. I decided to use the Virtue Bridge for this, and uh, it looks really, really cool. But first, to begin this episode, I want to give Cryptic some huge props. First of all, I want to thank them for expanding the ship slot limit because now I have a ton of ship slots. I have 58 actually, and uh, I, don't, I, th I think I got extra ones from the from uh, veteran rewards and other things from earlier in the game. I mean, I'm a lifetime subscriber. I think I got one for that. Anyway, um, got one for the vault. So I got some extra slots. The limit's actually 50. I have 58 somehow. Not gonna complain about it. You know, I have all but I think six slots filled up now. And that's basically me emptying out all my mirror ships. I do have a couple Tal Shiar ships that I have not yet configured. Because I configured, when I did this, I actually configured a whole buttload of ships coming up here. So, But anyhow, you're checking out the USS Excalibur. Some pretty cool stuff here. And uh, actually, it's a nice fitting bridge for this ship. So, where have I been? And many of you have been emailing me and asking me and finding me in game. And basically, here's what happened. You know, my computer is about four years old. It's a pretty nice computer. You know, I put a pretty nice 6-core AMD uh, Phenom 2 processor. And I had decent video cards, but I kept getting a blue screen. Couldn't figure out what the issue was. I'm going through the machine, checking everything out. Well, here, you know, I was running two AMD HD 5770s. Again, the computer's four years old. These cards are obviously very outdated, but very good for still. Well, one of the cards, um, the, the heat sink was, was messed up. In fact, the fan was messed up. And I couldn't get the part for it. So, you know what? I, I said, you know what? Screw it. I shelled out some cash for a couple 78, 7, HD 7870s, 2 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Um, these cards, one of these cards does what both of these did in, card, in Crossfire mode. Now that I have both of them, rendering videos is a lot faster. They, I mean, these cards are amazing, and they're not even top of the line. I mean, you know, the top of the line cards about four, five, six hundred bucks. But for gaming, these things are great. And um, you know, essentially, with this, with my old video card overheating, or one of them overheating, I was getting a blue screen. The computer was shutting off. So I, I figured that out because when I went to look at the cards, I touched one of them. Yeah, it almost burned my hand. <laughs> so that's what was going on and I had a whole bunch of stuff going on I had to build a, a recording studio which is what I did and I had a lot of other things going on but basically I had a lot of computer problems the video card issue is what I had going on so now that I have equipment and the means to do things yet again Stone World is going to be back and I decided to do the the battle cruiser because this was something that many people have, have basically asked me for and the Battle Cruiser is kind of a special ship. You know, you're looking at the Excalibur. Of course, this is a ship that... Uh, the, f the name of the first ship I ever had, it was a Miranda class. And I'm kind of configuring my trophies because I'm going to put a Miranda up there. As a little... <laughs> as a little bit of a tribute here. But I'm going to go over a configuration I have on this ship. Now, this cruiser is very cool. Um, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. And I'm going to kind of go down here to K7, which is my main hangout. If you're looking for me in-game, more than likely you could find me at K7. That's where I'm at most of the time. And uh, But, yeah, lots of great ship configurations, man. I have a lot of things I want to cover in these videos. You know, a lot of people uh, covering the Dyson Sphere, covering all the different ships I have going on, the different configurations. You know, as you can see, there's just so many different ships here. Got some of the, you know, mirror ships, uh, some of the sets. These Andorian ships are amazing. I'm finally able to use all them. You know, you got all these really killer ships and different configurations I have going on here. So, let's talk a bit about the 
battle cruiser and what this is capable of. And you know, I wait. You know, I had I wanted to get the fleet one before I really went over the ship. You know, when they added a fleet battle cruiser, and, and pretty much that's pretty much what I wanted to do. And, and and you know, the reason I waited for that was very simple: is the fact that I, you know I wanted to make sure that I really kind of had a feel for this ship at the time. At the at the time, so I'm gonna kind of take this out. I'm gonna give you some pointers, and then you're gonna see just an instance of me using it in the cure in cure space elite. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over here to the ferry, to the ferry sector, do one of the dailies, and. Just gonna kind of show you what's going on here, and I got her. I got it really well armed. It's actually some. Pr it's actually pretty cool. So I'm gonna exit out of here, go through, head to the ferry sector. So anyhow, anyhow, I do apologize for being gone. Many people, even in the fleet, are, have been asking me to do videos with a ton of new people in the fleet, and it's it's really cool. I mean, we're progressing really well. You know, we have a, we finally completed all the tiers of the dilithium mine and. Pretty well underway with the Starbase, too. So, um, you know, if you're looking for a fleet, obviously I'll give us the little plug. We are here, Battlefleet Olympus. And, uh, yeah, so here you go. And it's a pretty pretty cool-looking ship, actually. Um, I'm very big. I'm very, you know, the great, like, with Cryptic's really outstanding customization tools. Um, my inner nerd, I guess you want to call it, <laughs> comes out because I'm huge on ship names. You know, Excalibur, again, is a ship that named that. That was the name of my first ship. is the Miranda ship that I had. And I had a uh, heavy cruiser with that name. That would have been Excalibur A. Um, Excalibur B was actually a an advanced escort. Which was the regular Tier 5 one. And then, obviously, when I had I ended up ditching that. And uh, here we go. And NCC 9-3... Here, 93829C is the USS Excalibur. So, um, really, really cool stuff. So, let's check out the armaments I have on this ship and how I have it configured. Now, the really cool thing about the Excalibur, or I'm sorry, about this, this battle cruiser is that you can arm cannons on this on this thing on the front. It's got five weapon slots in the front, and you have three in the back, which is pretty cool. You know, it's, it, you got five in the front, three in the back. You have cannon capability, which is always nice. And I really dig this ship. So here's what I did. Um, you can also arm a cloaking device on it. And I don't have the cloaking device in my bank. Basically, hey, you know what? I'll show you what it looks like. You get the cloaking device from... You can get it either from a, from the from claiming a uh, Galaxy X. Or you can get it from claiming the Tactical Escort Retrofitter. As we all know it as a Defiant. So let me look here. Um, I know I have one in here somewhere. Just a matter of finding it. You, yeah, you can claim it from that. Here we go. Universal cloaking device. So, um, I just wasted my Azura, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> we can go there, so. There we go. Anyhow. So, this is the cloaking device. You see it right here. And this is basically, you know, tactical escort retrofit. You could put it on the Dreadnought Cruiser, the Battle Cruiser, Fleet Battle, etc., etc. So you, you do have the option to use this, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to use it. Just to kind of demonstrate it, take the Science Council off here for a second. And uh, go from there. So let's talk about the ship. First of all, you're looking at, uh, the, looking at the Battle Cruiser. I have five weapon slots up front. Now, the way I did this is I have a combination of cannons... A double beam array for, for for like a frontal attack, and the a regular phaser beam array, and then of course quantum torpedoes. These are a actual Borg weapons, and I get people emailing me about these. These were weapons you were able to get before the rep system, and when they got the rep system, I don't know why they, they did away with them, but they you had you can get them in any weapon type, and so I have tons of these because I used to do STFs like they were going on a style, which is why I have so many Mako. Omega and Borg sets because I kept earning them. Now they cost you a lot in dilithium, but back then they didn't cost you a lot at all. So, um, you know, you just got them in random drops, and I happen to get very lucky because I did probably 20, 30 STFs a day sometimes. Sounds insane, 
but that's what happens. So I have these weapons up here. They're Mark. You know, these Borg weapons, they're cool. I, I mean, you know, you have you have an accuracy attribute. Uh, you have critical severity. Then, of course, you have extra damage against the Borg. So that's pretty much what this ship has on it. You know, I do have some of the fleet elite fleet weapons as well and advanced fleet weapons. But uh, this ship's this ship is basically um, one of my one of my favorites to use in this game. It's one of the most versatile cruisers in the game. So here we go. You're going to check this out. So I this is what I did. So what I did and I'm going to tell you my strategy here in a second. The reason I put a, a, a dual phaser beam bank on anything that can that can use cannons, even on the escorts, because you know it is debatable. I mean, some guys prefer all cannons. I understand that, and some guys will, you know, some people will do like you know cannon rapid fire two and one, or scatter volley one and two. You know, they get a little more DPS, which you probably do. Um, I prefer to be able to do beam overload and the cannon rapid fire attributes, like when I'm doing an escort, so I get the best of both worlds and get a lot of damage in the beams do a little more constant as far as damage goes a little more accurate etc etc um quantum torpedoes I, I use these almost on pretty much every ship um i'm using a borg set i have a lot of mark 11 borg sets just from the pre-rep system so borg set you know in my opinion the best all-around set in the game you know as far as just universally using it anywhere i, I would probably say next the next best set would probably in my opinion be the aegis set you know because it can adapt to different damage types but really the borg set is the best all-around set in my opinion because of the fact you got the heal you got the shield heal you got the hull heal um you know the adapted shields I and mean, you got a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with the borg set um warp core and advanced fleet reinforced warp core um I ended up buying this one warp core before we got the elite warp cores when we hit tier three. You got the shield capacitor, and you know I, I kind of like it because it helps your weapons out a little bit. But these these advanced and, and these elite fleet warp cores are amazing. You know then there's the Borg shields, um, then a couple beam arrays in the back, quantum torpedoes in the back, nothing major. Some deuterium surpluses here, weapons batteries. Um, this console here. It's what you call universal variable auto targeting armament. What it is, it's a couple quantum torpedo projectiles that deal a lot of damage. Actually, they're not too bad. Got a hull plating. Got a neutronium alloy. I use these universal assimilated modules again. I have a ton of these because one of the Undyne slash Borg missions you used to be able to get this console for free if you did it. But, of course, now it's in a rep system and you get charged for it, dilithium-wise. Fuel generator. I, I put the cloaking device on. Then I got three of these phaser relays. And then, of course, to help my quantum torpedoes. So um, my strategy with this ship is, is very simple. And we're going to look at my bridge officer abilities, for example. Now, here's what I have going on. I have torp spread one. You know, it helps with my torpedo attack. That's great. Um, and because you have one Lieutenant Universal Council on this fleet variant here. Um, and you, you basically, I have Cannon Rapid Fire 1, you know, because what happens is I'll do a frontal attack. Actually, it's kind of cool. I'll hit this, and then I'll hit this beam, fire at will 3. And the beams start hitting everything in sight. The rapid fire starts hitting whatever I'm targeting. Sometimes I'll do a cannon scatter volley and a beam fire at will. And it just unleashes the fury on people. Overload, which is basically for the phasers. And then I have an attack bat and beta 1. Which, again, when I'm using beam fire at will to spam everything with beta 1. Just attack pretty much everything that's going on. So, And then, of course, my Ensign Tactical Station... Attack Team 1, pretty much essential, in my opinion, in the game, is having this ability at, at some point if you're able to equip it. Um, my engineering section, very simple. I use the Warp Plasma to stun enemies and stop them. You know, Emergency Power of the Shields 3, you got Shield Polarity 1, and uh, Engineering Team 1 for Hull Repair. This is kind of a standard engineering configuration for my cruisers, although I do use some different attributes, but this was pretty much my standard for this one. And then what I do is sometimes I'm using tractor beam repulsors because I really like this. Helps me. It helps you know in scenario. It helps you to guard the Kang. It helps you to guard probes if you're guarding them. Um, or I'll just use science team two here. And then of course I got hazard emitters for the 
shield or for the hull repair. Um, but I'm going to go here. We're going to go here and actually look. And we're going to take off and go to one of these patrols here. And then after this, you're going to see a, an instance of... And you're going to see what I'm going to do with this Deferi patrol. So... I'm going to go here and... I'm going to demonstrate my strategy with everything. So... Here we go. We're going to take out some... Some Breen. For the sake of doing so. And i going to add the cloaking ability here. So I'm going to cloak her. And uh, I don't really have any attributes in stealth, but... But here we go. I'm just going to do a little bit of attacking. <laughs> and I'm going to select... Well... Select shields here and... Pretty much what I do is... You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much what, I, what I'm doing. This is kind of my, my vector of attack here. As I'm actually going to set this so... It attacks me. Strategic maneuvering. That way it's staying away from my bring my uh Deferi counterpart here. And uh pretty much this is kind of where I'm going. Pretty easy actually. Now I set this in elite mode. And I play the game in elite mode. I don't play the game in normal or easy or advanced or anything like that. You know, I just go for elite. I mean that's pretty much the only way to go as far as this go this game goes. And uh, the loot critter. I don't know what the loot critter actually is, but... <laughs> I, I wondered that ever since they did the big update for Season 8.5. It's got, I got the loot critter, which I don't know what that is. So, uh, But you kind of get an idea of, of the ship and how it works and what's going on here. You know, Again, you can cloak her. And I'm going to go just take this Breen Chalgret warship out. There we go, baby. Now, this is why I love the Borg set. You get the instant shield heal, which is amazing. Triggers itself. And, um, you know, just kind of, you know, I, I get a, you get a tractor beam with it, which drains their power. Helps you out tremendously, actually. And the Borg set, again, probably universally the best set in the game as far as its attributes and what it does for you. Which is why most of my ships, the set, I, believe it or not, the sets that I have the most on ships, they, there's there's three sets that I actually use, and I'm just kind of going through here. There's three sets that I actually use the most. Um, the Borg set by far, I mean the Borg set, Borg set outnumbers all the other ones. The, the Aegis set is probably right there with the Mako Mark 12. You know, I got a lot of Aegis sets, a lot of Mako Mark 12 sets, so it's. Um, Pretty cool how that works, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for the shielding now, <laughs> as one might go. And there's a lot of things to do. Want to go over at some point here, to get you guys away from me, repulsors. Um, and now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fire these these quantum projectiles here. See them pull out from either side of the ship, and uh, they're they're firing beams, and then they are going to yeah basically attack whoever is is kind of there so um, and, and that's what I love about this ship the cannons you can do beams I kind of do a best of both worlds and um, you know some people I know do all beams they do eight beams which works really well um, if you use directed energy modulation and put eight beams on a cruiser you can do some pretty cool stuff there But this is pretty much how you use this ship. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, there's no... Uh, it's like it's it's like the best of both worlds. You get a little bit of escort here. And uh, a little you get a lot of cruiser. You get the tanking ability of a cruiser. But you do have some of the um, power of an escort. And just took them out. No problems at all. Look at that. So we'll go over here and... We'll take out the last three things of, 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 of the Breen here. But, um, again, you can cloak the ship. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with this thing. Um, if you notice, the nacelles are lower. The actual regular version of the ship, the Sea Store version, is... Um, the Sea Store version of the ship is actually... The nacelles are up, and you can choose when you customize it, you know, 
whether the nacelles are up or down. So, undecloak decloaker, and we'll just go in for the attack here. But this is what I'm doing. You see, I'm doing the beams coming at each other, doing cannons, taking on multiple enemies. And uh, there's a lot of versatility to this thing. There really is. You know, you got these cruiser commands that they added, which are amazing. Um, this has three out of the four. Most of your cruisers have four. This one has three. I believe the Ferengi Decora has three. The Dreadnought has two, which actually baffles me a little bit. Why it would only have two that you could possibly use. But, you know, the Dreadnought should just be just a, 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 a conglomeration of badassery here. But And we're going to take out this last ship. So, um, there we go. I'm not even going to bother to cloak. I'm just going to come at him like a Klingon, you know. But this is how you do it, man. This, this is what's really cool about this ship. I mean, you know, you, you just have so much... You know, I got these torpedoes coming at him again. You know, it's just a really cool ship to use. You can inflict a lot of damage in tank. You can configure this thing to be a tank. You can configure it to be a ship that... You know, maybe like a healer, for example. If you're using a science, you, you could actually use some healing abilities from this thing get like you know extend shields three and go that route you can do a lot of things with this ship i mean you can i'm attack officer so i'm here to blow things up and again you know this thing is very good for for pretty much anything that you're using it for and uh there we go yeah the loot's not that great sell to a vendor but again these commands are cool weapon system efficiency um strategic maneuvering And then you have frequency modulation. So, you know, not bad. The maneuvering's cool because it helps your engines out a little bit. Flight speed. Um, then there's also the other attribute that raises your threat control. So that really works out really well. So basically, this is the battle cruiser. If you want to... This is the battle cruiser if you... I mean, if you want it. And a very, very cool ship. It's about time that the Federation got something that's meant to like beat somebody's ass and take someone out and i and i think it's like i said i think it's a really really cool ship so with that you know we're gonna do a you're gonna see the ship in action in an stf actually did an stf the day of this video so um it's a very it's fairly recent and i don't have the cloaking device on it because i use a science console to help the shield emitters just one of the vorn ones but we're gonna go i'm sorry not vorn the uh voth or Dyson, whatever you want to call it. So, I think I have to quick equip too, which I really don't need because most of my ships are equipped for certain types of missions. So with that, check this out. Here is the Cure Space Elite. Got some great music on for you. And by good music, some Ariane song called The Amazing Flight. I Obviously, you'll hear this while while i'm uh <laughs> while we're playing this but you're gonna check it out we're here back in the bridge of the excalibur you're gonna check out the, sh the ship in action as well in an stf which is uh, primarily what i use it for uh, but it's a very very cool very cool ship so check it out and we're going over here to the vorn system to do a little uh hunting of the borg so with that check this out and you can see this ship in action so here you go there is danger ahead but do not be afraid for i am with you like breath itself darkness will lead to light color will bleed into the night beautiful colors the like of which you have never seen let the dream of confusion lead you into the virgin light be gone be all-seeing, be brave.
amazing flight in space.
and I'll see you all on the next episode. Take care.